I'll be asking you what the subject is and what the predicate is. So In the energized world of today's schools, two things are clear. Literacy skills are key to success in school and life. And extra practice and attention help children develop these skills. <laughs> Across the country, many schools are reaching out to engage community partners to help educate our youth. National service programs such as AmeriCorps, Senior Corps, and Learn and Serve America are invaluable resources for this effort, connecting people who want to help with children who want to learn. Clam. The AmeriCorps members have, have become an integral part of our school. They're, we, we consider at Mount View, everyone at Mount View is a family, and they are part of our family. Tell me what you don't want to know. If I thought they weren't going to be here anymore, I'd lock all the doors so that they had to stay in. They are a, a very important part like of best. our school. What she liked best is, is tutoring these children. She loved that. You really life. can't run the, the program without the VISTA and the AmeriCorps people. They are, they are so vital to the success of the program because they are the, the, the first line that make the connections with the community people. So what can I do? or any suggestions as to how to keep them, or how to, when one dis, you know, gets distracted, bring them back in as quickly as possible so I can get... Some volunteer programs are clearly more successful than others. One cannot simply drop tutors into schools without thorough and thoughtful preparation and organization. You think, God, I really want to do that. We talked about the wins and stuff like that. There's a scale. Research and experience demonstrate that the most successful programs share some key ingredients. Community Connections, a team approach that engages community volunteers, parents, partnering organizations, and schools. Regular training and supervision of tutors with opportunities for feedback and reflection. Access to school resources, including facilities, instructional materials, reading specialists, and expert teachers. Frequent, regular, and structured tutoring sessions built on mentoring relationships established methods for tracking student progress and evaluating programs. Good job, Trini. Hi. Hey, hey. All right, so let's turn to page one. In this video, we explore those key elements in four elementary schools with highly effective programs. Programs built for success. To expand capacity for helping students with reading, Mirror Lake School found a great resource in community volunteers. National Service members have helped to recruit some 80 people from the community to help at this school. The volunteers soon get hooked on the rewards of working with children. I've been retired for a couple of years, and we live right across the street, and so I've been trying to find, well, what can I do to to do so, I came over to ask about getting involved in this. I tried various other things and looked into them, and nothing satisfied me more, actually, than dealing with children, I'm finding out. Time just flies when I'm here, and that, to me, says it all. And typically, John and I have been able to come at lunchtime. You know, um, it just works out real well, and it's real easy. It's helping uh, struggling learners to learn how to read, because, I mean, that's the most important skill you can have out in the world. It's very rewarding. It, it's actually, um, you. I think I almost get more out of it than the student does. To reach out to the community, Mirror Lake is using its AmeriCorps VISTA member to recruit volunteers and other resources. I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA, and what I do here is I recruit the volunteers for the program, I build community partnerships, where they support the program either through donations, grants, or people of that business, they volunteer with the program. To be most effective, community volunteer programs need structure and support. And this is where national service members as community capacity builders can play a key role. Our um, national service members are critical to the program and its operation. I'm not sure that we'd be able to do it without them. They're really responsible for the day-to-day -day running of our students, all the record keeping of the students, and actually choosing materials for our students with a little support from myself and from Barbara. 
We're lucky enough to be able to fund a um, volunteer coordinator here. She is the one that coordinates all of the tutoring and the schedules, as well as the liaison between the community members, the, the VISTA and the AmeriCorps members, and myself. She's an integral part of what we do. Tutors come in and pick up a file folder when they come in, and in that we have tracking logs. And every week they write, it's about a half page of um, questions or, or details that they jot down what books they've been reading with the student, what page they ended on so that another tutor can perhaps come in and pick up where they left off. Um, jotting down any progress that they see. Um, we talk informally a lot in between sessions, either beforehand to talk about what we think they should do with the student that day, how they progressed from, say, a month ago. Um, and it's really interesting to look in the folder. You can often just see a pattern of improvement as you look through those written tracking logs. Tutoring at Mirror Lake takes place in a room dedicated and decorated for that purpose. Abundant school resources, leveled books, hands-on activities, and imaginative reading spaces are concentrated here. So we designed the room with six different reading stations that are each different theme, kind of with the idea that that reading can take you anywhere. A lot of materials well organized and available that tutors and students can access. And it's a small area, but each, each tutor and student grouping has their own space to read and write and talk about what they've read. Let's talk about how to introduce a word or how to introduce This a program word to benefits from the instructional expertise of a reading teacher on special assignment. She regularly trains the National Service members and community volunteers in tutoring skills and strategies. When I say finger frame, it's usually two fingers and a finger frame on each side. So they find the word they on this page. My role in this program is to train, um, give initial training to all volunteers as well as ongoing training for AmeriCorps and VISTA. We have a set procedure for lessons for our students um, that was developed through actually hands-on experience in terms of what a community tutor can do in a half hour period with students. We do try to incorporate comprehension and uh, strategies and, and phonics skills dependent upon what the classroom teacher's recommendations are and what we see that child needs and we in turn give that information to the tutor to use with those students. Cover the word, mix it up and have them see if they can put the word back together again. Let's start the sentence over. By looking at this side. I can see this year that I've been through so many more trainings. I've worked with so many different students that now I have more skills. With its combination of training and recruitment, Mirror Lake Elementary School has successfully cultivated an important resource in the surrounding community. National Service members have played key roles in developing a sustainable structure that assures that children get the individualized help they need now and in the future. It's almost been the volunteers bringing in more volunteers. It's been kind of like ripples in the water um, going out. And we have a lot that, that have come back for all five years. So I think people should be encouraged to look at their own resources, have their program reflect their community, um, and, and all the wonderful, I mean, retired people, um, the, the high school kids, um, just involve a lot of people in making that program be successful. At Joseph Gale Elementary School, 75% of the families are low income and many of the children are English language learners. To Title I teacher Patty Howe, having well-trained tutors makes all the difference. And when we have that person here who has the desire to make a difference and the confidence they are going to make a difference, they do. They make a difference with the kids. How are you? Tracy. Yeah, you did a play. I came in Yes, yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 The uh, Pine Park Mystery. It's family reading night at Joseph Gale, and the turnout is overwhelming, due largely to the outreach efforts of AmeriCorps member Jeff Scott. Each corner's got a station on it. You'll have about probably eight or nine minutes at each station. Each station has a different topic. The AmeriCorps position gave me an opportunity to be uh, around youth. 
um, doing also with the families of the youth in a very humble setting in which we would work to provide mentoring, tutoring skills. Um, I really wanted the small group aspect. I wanted to be a part of just a few kids, watch them grow through a whole year and see the changes. Jeff knew he wanted to work with young people, and AmeriCorps offered him that opportunity. What has made Jeff a really effective tutor is the rich and varied training he received up front and throughout his service year. And the first thing the member actually observes is watching us give an assessment so that the member knows exactly what a child does when they read, why they do it, and what we are looking for. There are very specific strategies a child needs to become a reader. My mentor teachers help in the planning through correcting um, plans that I've already made. They are, have a keen eye for picking out what's going to work and what's not going to work and also time frame. A person can't go into an occupation and have no training and expect to be successful. And the same is true of an AmeriCorps member. They play a very critical role. Our programs are very specific, very fine-tuned, and very important to the school. And for a member to be successful, they have to have training. They have to know what they need to do. And we had talked last time about bringing back some of our goal setting and some of our visioning from the beginning of the year and what we had done Jeff and other National Service members also benefit from a community partnership such as this one at Pacific University where skill development for tutors is combined with graduate level program credit. We meet on a weekly basis for what we call our team meetings. Um, generally half of that time is our graduate level class that we have through Pacific University. And then we do team, team meeting time. It's, it's a time for us to network and to talk about how things are going in our sites, to troubleshoot if we need to, to share our successes, to rally some troops sometimes <laughs> for different events that are going on. So this is the trick here, okay? Let's think of this as a circle. Having AmeriCorps okay? members like Jeff allows the school to provide regular and frequent after-school okay, sessions for students in reading and math. Circle. I'm going to draw a line going down and a line going across. The success of a tutoring program is dependent on regular and consistent interactions with the tutor and the student. Just as in a classroom, if we are going to teach math or reading, you can't teach it once a week or once a month and expect a child to be successful. It has to be daily, every day, and at generally the same time every day. Consistency is very important. Jeff's desire to work with parents as well as youth is realized at family reading night, where tutors and teachers can share with parents the techniques that help children learn to read. And see all the activities going on in the park. That's a very good picture. The family night was organized as an opportunity for AmeriCorps members to meet parents of the children that they work with. He really likes him, and I think he, he pays more attention to him. He respects him. He's learned, he learns a lot. Before the tutoring started, he wouldn't even attempt to sound words out. It was basically like, I can't do it. And now he'll sit there and he'll struggle through it and get some things done and, and just in sounding out. And actually, his all around reading is getting a lot better, too. And we wanted to show them simple techniques that they could use at home with their child as they're reading. It's a simple story from their literature books that they read from. After we make our predictions, we want to quickly go through each page of the book and look at the pictures and talk about the characters and the things that might be happening. But don't actually read the story at this point. Now we have a cat. Oh, it looks, he sees a spider. It looks like he's scared of the spider too. We have them write their own endings to the story, especially if they didn't think they liked how it ended. Sop said, Cal, who's king of the mountain? Oh, now who's the king of the mountain? The cow. <laughs> See, the dog's scared. You can tell by how his body is, huh? Yeah, he's... This experience with the AmeriCorps position has really, really opened my eyes as to how powerful I can be as an educator and basically has influenced me to attend and go back to school to become a teacher. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Really, I really enjoy when uh, Dan comes because I see how happy you get.
we have about 60% of our students go home and speak another language that's not English. I think at last count we had 24 languages that are spoke at the school. Cat. Good. Cut. The diversity at Mount View Elementary offers an opportunity for AmeriCorps members to tutor English language learners daily, building their vocabulary and basic phonics skills. Where is something that you wear on your neck in the winter? What is this? It's Jomar's turn. Jomar's turn. I had no idea that cultural backgrounds had such an impact on the way kids think and learn. And so I had to do a lot of studying to try to find out which ways kids learn and how they work best. Uh, looking for the sunset pig. At least half of them at the beginning of the year did not speak English, and 80% of them weren't reading. And now 100% of them are speaking English and reading and writing, and it's just a tremendous amount of growth. And I really like this age because they learn so quickly. There's this dramatic shift um, from first day of school not knowing that, you know, that color over there is red, to now being able to read about it and describe it and know what an adjective is and tell stories about things. It's just amazing. What's that word? Hands. Even with the AmeriCorps members helping English language learners, the school still needed more tutors. They found a creative solution nearby in a service learning class at Evergreen High School. What are some of the things you can do to raise the comprehension of the story? How do you help the kids understand the story? Marianne Yamaguchi is teaching her high school way, team read class, strategies for building reading comprehension. The project has been supported by Learn and Serve America, another program of the Corporation for National and Community Service. It's more than just an exercise because these teens are on their way to the elementary school to apply what they've learned to the real work of tutoring young learners. Students like real work. They like to do something that really matters to somebody. Many of the kids in a, in a busy classroom are not getting that one-on-one -on -one time with a single adult. There is nobody cooler than teenagers to little kids, and so the other piece is, I don't think there's anybody who could attract kids the way teenagers do. Um, do you know what the problem was? Or was there any problem? Then you have to sleep in snow? Yeah, that's, that, could, that could be a problem. You, um... uh, high school students read to the, um, their tutor, tutti, I guess you call it. Then um, there's a time for the um, students to read to their tutor. And that's usually the book that they're working on in class or have worked on several you know, days in a row. You have a classroom of 20 to 25 kids and the teacher can't get around and listen to every student read every day. As the teenagers tutor the elementary students, the AmeriCorps members observe and provide assistance or pointers. I think it's important for it to be regular and predictable because kids need to get into the groove. And the more it's unpredictable and irregular, the longer it takes for them to get out their folders and get started. Predictability is a real key function. Can I check with you guys on that high school program and how's it The going? AmeriCorps members meet regularly with the Title I teacher to review the work of the high school tutors and to make important adjustments. Um, we had one group with one student tutoring four kids and we, we downsized that and we increased another one so they're more balanced now. Um, um, so there, we have a couple of tutors who are just very strong and they work really well. They have how many does Umi have? Umi has like five or six Umi. kids and she works really well with those kids. Little bear. Little bear, like the country little bear? Yep. Little bear. Living in the same community, the high school tutors are good role models for the elementary students. And the service learning aspect of tutoring has had an effect on many of the teen tutors. Search. Well, at first I was thinking that I was going to be a nurse, neurosurgeon, but now I think I might work with kids, like become a pediatrician or something like that. Right off the bat, some of them had trouble reading certain words, little words, and I like help them sound it out. Take half the word, cover it up, get the other two words, and they get it after a while. So now they're better readers than when they started. 
when I was younger in the first grade, I couldn't read very well, and I wasn't as half as smart as these kids are because these kids are really smart now. And I just like helping them, knowing that they got good scores or whatnot, knowing they'll be smart when they're older. I've learned to um, plan a lot before you just go in and do something because I just the first day I just kind of walked in, didn't know what I was doing, and it was it was difficult. I learned to take more time to plan and figure out what I was going to do. And now I uh, think I'll work with younger people just because the excitement I get from seeing them grow and learn and knowing I'm making an impact. It's the beginning of the school day at Woodlawn Elementary, and these students are getting their morning hugs from Grandma Beulah. She's a 79-year-old foster grandparent, a senior corps volunteer. My life is over here at Woodlawn now, and I'm glad to be here. I wouldn't want to be any place else. Well, out of this semester, I only bit off one day. Uh, I guess the best way I could describe Grandma Beulah is that she's an important presence. She's a revered member of that school community and the principal actually looks to her to help calm children, just as a grandmother would, just to calm them, begin their day, affirm them, um, and just be a presence that, you know, we have this elder in our presence and uh, she'll take care of us or she'll be there for us. Beulah is one of the group known to the kids as the Grandmas. Joining her are a team of four members from Experience Corps, an AmeriCorps program. The program coordinator is Sue Tingley. They really have a sense of community. Um, Berta King went to Woodlawn Elementary School, has grandchildren at that school, and is very, very devoted. Um, Cherry Hendricks lives across the street. Betty Tolbert lives nearby, and Margaret Milton um, is a grandmother raising a grandchild. So they all have a sense of community and what kids need. I'd like to start right at the beginning and move from there. I'm anxious to get some of your ideas about it. It's very important for experienced core members to have some training with the teachers they're going to be working with, again, to get those meshing styles. I think um, real learning um, that is going to transform a student's life and really propel them in the world comes from the kind of learning that you have when you're working with somebody that you're bonded with. They look into the student's eyes and the kids feel really safe with them. And then the learning can go right from there. I want you to know you did a real good job on that story today, okay? Excellent. And you got all stall up in the right. You did a good job. Okay. Thank you. The key at Woodlawn is the grandmas consider themselves a team. They meet regularly to reflect on their daily assignments. That's when we sit down and talk to each other and we just lay the problem solving out on the table and each one of us will tell what has happened and what went on and, and we try to get an answer. And I see that in us and Sherry I will say to you, you are a good leader when I get out of line and I'm always getting there. <laughs> she always, you always bring me back. Betty, I thank you for your compliments. You tell me when, you know. You I think that. over time, the Experience Corps team just kind of takes on its own kind of chemistry. Um, there are some veteran teams who've been around for five or six years who dine together, um, socially see each other, uh, very concerned about illness, very concerned about uh, any sort of uh, emotional upheaval in someone's life. Um, they just become a connect, very connected group. So Mount St. Helen, when it exploded on May 18th of 1980. Just as the name of the program implies, experienced core members can bring a wealth of intergenerational experiences so happened, from their own lives. Flowers and grass and trees start growing back on Mount St. Helen. In this school, the grandmas are used in a variety of settings, as classroom tutors, one-on-one -on -one mentors, or as small group leaders. They also help out in the fluency lab. They didn't feel like reading or doing anything like math or whatever. I would talk to these kids until 
I got them to know that there there were somebody here believed that believed in them, believed they could do whatever they wanted to do if they were if they had some support and after after doing that I could I have seen kids just turn completely around from not wanting to read, not wanting to do math, love it right now. Sometimes they look at us as being old, you know. <laughs> and uh, so the generation gap is so far. And um, so you treat them with respect. And um, later they'll treat you with respect. Yeah. I like the way you make your letters, you know that? You're really doing good. This doesn't mean that you don't bowl. You bowl, you do the same thing that you always did. You're going to be as nice as you, as you were all the other times that you went. The grandmas further connect the students with the community through periodic school outings that have value beyond the fun they provide. I think that the bowling that Experience Car members at Woodlawn School provide really helps to boost the social and emotional skills of children so that they can succeed in school. So that just the very routine of going on a bus with proper manners, uh, going to the bowling alley, choosing the ball, helping another student get the ball, uh, keeping track of the score, having a snack afterwards, succeeding at all of that is so critical to going back to school and being able to stay in the classroom and attend to your work. Oh, hey, Brad. Who is that? The car? Okay. It's just a really good feeling for me to, to have someone from the community who's willing to come back and so excited to come back and happy to help the students. And I love her. She's a great lady. And I really wish that we had more people in our school and every school more like Grandma Beulah just because it's a really powerful experience. Well, look, I got another one here. And just to know that Grandma, Granny, Grandma Beulah loves me, and I love her too. In the experience of all of these schools, working with national service programs not only fosters caring relationships, but also contributes to real student achievement. We've seen a dramatic increase in our uh, literacy rates, the, how the improvement of, of the students, our scores on um, state tests and, and standardized tests. It really makes a difference for those kids. It helps them get over, over the hump. Remember, we have been working on Mount St. Helen for over two weeks. I know that some of the children that have been regularly working with the Experience Corps workers have grown in the past half year, have had in reading and in writing over a year's growth so far. And I attribute that in large part to that one-on-one -on -one attention that they get. From these four portraits, it is clear that effective programs take tutoring very seriously. They plan, they manage, they train, they mentor, they observe and they measure performance. They ensure collaboration with classroom teachers. They set up sustainable structures. They establish strong partnerships with families and the community. The successful volunteer tutor programs don't just happen, they are built for success. You can play games, you can read, that's my favorite part. I learned how to read and write. I learned to read line books. Makes me feel great. We're getting smarter and smarter each day. I used to be really kind of low and struggling, but ever since I got into this, it kind of made me feel good about reading and stuff, so now I love to read. It, it, it takes the teachers, it takes the parents, it takes a lot of volunteers, mentors, to try to help these children. And then this day and age, these children need all the help they can get.